death drive, there is something valuable to it um, in that it generates something in our conscious lives. It does actually, it, it's not trying to, it's not economic in the sense of it's trying to do this, but, but there is an effect. And it's an effect we all know, but that is hard to understand initially without this theory. And it is, it is the fact that we have what Immanuel Kant calls um, categorical imperatives. We, um, he made a distinction between hypothetical imperatives and categorical imperatives. Hypothetical imperatives are decisions we make that are related to pleasure principle. We can, you know, eat now or eat later. We can go out to see friends or stay in or all of these different decisions we make and animals have hypothetical imperatives, right? We have all of these different decisions we can make. Categorical imperatives are at a level that's outside of utilitarianism. It is the experience that we all know when we think that someone is worth dying for, even if it doesn't give us anything, even um, if it's completely destructive, obviously to us, we're gonna die. It's still worth doing, or an ethical thing is, is worth doing, no matter uh, how much we're offered as bribes uh, to do the opposite or to turn a blind eye. There is this feeling within us that there are some things that are so valuable, they stand outside of the pleasure pain calculation. And even if we never actually do the, live up to the categorical imperative, even if we can't live up to the categorical imperative, there is a sense in which we all feel its call at times in our lives. And death drive can help us understand why that is. Because the more, some, the more lack and loss is hard baked into us, the more the, the, uh, there comes into being something that we want that's kind of like uh, uh, drives us, right? So like, it basically, we, have to, we lose ourselves towards a sacred object. We sacrifice ourselves so much that we create a sacred object. It's not that there's a sacred object that we sacrifice for. It's that we sacrifice in order to bring into being a sacred object. And by sacred object, I mean an object that um, demands everything from us that we would give everything for. So this brings us into the level and into the place of Kantian ethics. And it brings us into what makes us the most human and the most inhuman, right? This is all where all the action is, right? It becomes the worst of things where people will kill themselves for their country right or wrong, right, and, and fascism or whatever. Or people will kill themselves and die for their country in order to live up to the, in order to get their country to live up to their, its ideals of democracy or freedom or justice, right? It's the thing that, that means someone will die to save another and also that someone will do something incredibly destructive, right? So all of these behaviors that aren't just utilitarian, we're talking about you know, beyond good and evil. We're talking about those acts that are evil in the sense of disconnected from utilitarianism. So in Hollywood movies, um, someone like the Joker in Christopher Nolan's Batman is a type of character who does acts regardless of utilitarian value. So he destroys the money that he makes. Um, and uh, they, they talk about this bad person that Alfred was trying to find a warlord who um, couldn't be bribed uh, because he had no interest in money. They were using these diamonds, I think, to bribe people. And this guy had no interest in the diamonds, was throwing them out, like, just like they were rocks. Okay. So death drive is connected, you could say, to the, this dimension of the Marquis de Sade, radical evil, and Immanuel Kant, radical good. That's partly why if you guys know about Lacan's work, that he, he talks about Kant and the sad as, as similar, as having something to, that they share in common. And that sounds weird because the Marquis de Sade um, is writing about profound evil, um, kind of like a, a kind of suffering that is beyond any, even any pleasurable value, right? It's quite kind of uh, boring to read the sad in many ways. Um, 
and then Kant's, who's got these highest ethical ideals, but because they're both, in a sense, fed by death drive. Okay, and oh, and by the way, then connecting that with that's why human beings, we have all sorts of rituals of sacrifice. Why do we have all sorts? So um, Bataille is a thinker who writes about religious sacrifice, where you destroy the best animal you have, right? The animal without blemish, not to eat. You don't sell it. You don't do anything. You utterly destroy it for nothing, for no economic gain. But uh, Tom McGowan uses the example of sports, right? Sports, and I, I think this is a great example because sports are stupid, right? When you really think about it, like someone's kicking a ball from one side of a pitch to another, right? Why would anybody be that interested in that? But you think about the, the amount of sacrifice that people put into their sports teams. And, and it's not that they're putting the sacrifice into it because it's so amazing. It's so amazing because they're putting the sacrifice into it. So when you're a kid and your dad or whatever's bringing you to a football game and getting you into it, at first you're probably going like, this is rubbish. But as you commit and get and, and put your time and energy into it, it then creates this dimension. And then sports become actually really interesting. And you know, I've got friends who love sports and I can't understand it. They're very rational, reasonable people who seem to absolutely love it. Like Liverpool recently got into some, like the top, what I, whatever you call it, they, 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 they won something. I don't even know what it was, but some of my friends were going ballistic about this. And it was because Liverpool hadn't been there for ages, right? Whatever it was. So it was like they'd been waiting all their lives for it. And of course, there must be some disappointment ultimately <laughs> will come as on the other side of that. Um, so, but the other one is capitalism. Right? is that consumer capitalism is that we sacrifice so much to, to try to get the kind of the goal, you know, to buy ourselves out of the system, to kind of like get that beautiful home and be, be able to retire, whatever. Like we, we sacrifice so much to the system. And the weird thing is we don't see this consciously. We think we're sacrificing for the object but it's through the sacrifice that we create the object. And this then connects with the last thing I want to say before we open it up, with religion.